right! Team Avatar is back! Air, water, earth, fire, fan and sword! So last week, fans of Avatar The Last Airbender were treated to what is possibly the greatest week of news announcements of our lives, and that is that Nickelodeon and the show's original creators, Brian Konietzko and Michael Dante DiMartino, are teaming up to produce a brand new studio dedicated to creating Avatar animated content, including a movie and multiple new shows, miniseries, and limited series. Let's discuss all of it. So for those of you who do not know, Avatar The Last Airbender was a show that aired on Nickelodeon from 2005 to 2008. It received rave, critical, and commercial reviews and enthusiasm. It won multiple different awards for choreography, visuals, storytelling, uh, the whole nine rounds. It's an incredibly popular show. It's my favorite show of all time. It's my favorite franchise of all time. And in the years since then, we've gotten comic books. We've gotten a sequel series, The Legend of Korra, which ran from 2012 to 2014. And while not as popular as The Last Airbender, still has an incredibly dedicated core group of fans, myself included. But since then, we haven't gotten a ton. There's always been this understanding and this feeling that this franchise doesn't do enough. Uh, this world that the creators and the writing team have crafted is so rich, so full of different stories to tell, uh, so full of opportunity for novels, for more shows, for movies, for all of these different things that people would discuss. But we never really expected it to come to fruition whether it was something to do with the hurdles that were faced by the creative team, it always felt like there was an obstacle in the way of really bringing about the show's full potential. Whether it was Nickelodeon stymieing the development of Legend of Korra, in which they only guaranteed the showrunners a season at a time, so there was a doubt of if they could actually do a multi-season arc. Uh, at the end of Korra, totally removing it from the network, totally removing it from TV programming, and putting the last two or three episodes online only, the penultimate uh, Avatar show at the time, just throwing it onto the internet. It felt like the team at Nickelodeon did not respect and understand what this show was and what the value of this franchise was and that was the feeling for a long time then of course a couple years ago we get the news that netflix has picked up the show and in a big way they're taking they're tapping the original creators and they are producing a live action retelling of avatar the last airbender uh, with people and uh, CG effects and all of it with a big budget and it was incredibly exciting to see that the creators were involved and to see their enthusiasm for it. It was a great time to be an Avatar fan but as the next two years continued, no news. We get little drips about open casting and at one point there was a leak about some test footage and all of these different things but it was never anything substantial. 2020 comes around. At this point, Avatar is actually doing quite well in terms of multimedia stuff. Two novels, a novel had come out at this point with a second novel coming, novels on the, uh, the, the Earth Avatar before Aang, Avatar Kyoshi, that are wildly successful and are quite good. If you haven't read them and you're an Avatar fan, I would highly recommend it. The comics continued the story of Aang and the gang after the end of Sozin's Comet talking about how they went about rebuilding the world and trying to establish new areas where benders could get along with one another eventually leading to republic city and cora cora also got comics following her run there's two out now and they're all very good and they're in, they're in consultation with the creators it's all canon the franchise was moving but 20 but 2020 hits and everything changes. Near the beginning of 2020, April or March, we get the announcement that the original show was coming to Netflix. For those of you who do not know, it was pretty difficult to watch Avatar for a long time. Uh, you could get it on Amazon Prime Video, uh, but not a lot of people have it, and it did not come with a Prime subscription. It was something that you had to pay either a monthly fee for or you had to pay for the individual episodes. So it was very difficult to own. And of course, it's on DVD and Blu-ray, but 
a lot of people don't watch DVD and Blu-ray anymore, and it doesn't really cater to a mass media franchise. Things like Marvel and Star Wars, you can get them on any streaming service. You can get them digitally almost anywhere. It's constantly talked about in pop culture in the news. It's a different beast. And for people who were fans like myself of Avatar, that never happened. So when it gets announced that it's coming to Netflix, the original show, this isn't the live action show. This isn't the crappy movie that we will never talk about by M. Night Shyamalan back in 2010. It's none of that. It's the original show. It's the bread and butter of the franchise. It was very exciting. And eventually, when it dropped in May, it exploded. The fandom blew up again. I believe it ran in the top 10 shows on Netflix for like, it holds the record for the amount of consecutive days or weeks that a show is in the top 10 on Netflix. It was the most popular animated show on the platform last year. It did gangbusters. It brought about the fandom in a way that really hasn't in a long time, and it reinvigorated people into their love of this show, whether they had watched it when they were younger or if they were first getting introduced to it. I know in the past year, I've introduced a couple friends to the show for the first time, some of which are now just downright obsessed with it, and it's amazing to see. Eventually, Korra also came to the streaming network in August. That hit the top 10 for a while, too. Not as long as Avatar, of course, but it's also there. So the two big pillars of the franchise are now available to be viewed and enjoyed whenever anybody wants. That summer, the second Kyoshi novel came out, everything was good, and then, bam. The news hits. Mike and Brian, the show's creators, the the showrunners for Avatar The Last Airbender and for The Legend of Korra are departing the Netflix live action series. And they are they will no longer have any say in the project. And that was a blow led people to think, what's the future of this franchise? What are what's the future of this show? Since then, we really have not heard a lot from the show, leading to a lot of fans thinking I'd honestly prefer if it was canceled. We don't need this. And it was just, things were up in the air. Comics were slowing over the last couple months. They moved from doing big meaty story trilogies to just one shots. There were all of these questions. What is the future of the franchise? What are the creators thinking? Are we going to see something new? With the success of the original show and of Korra coming to Netflix and the popularity that it brought about, a lot of people were of the opinion that we probably within the next couple years will see something new. It's popular again. It's been a long time. It's been seven years since the end of Korra. This would be the time to bring something new into the franchise and really try to reinvigorate it with maybe a third show talking about an Earth avatar, whether that comes after Korra or an Earth avatar from the past, pre-Aang, pre the Hundred Year War, pre the history that we already know about. That's what was kind of the expectation. And eventually we hear that Paramount Plus is happening. They're taking CBS All Access, turning it into a new streaming service to compete with the likes of Netflix, Disney Plus, HBO Max, and Hulu. And since Viacom owns all of this, they own Paramount, they own CBS, they own Nickelodeon, people were of the opinion that, oh, a new streaming service, they're going to want some popular properties. Maybe Avatar could be on there. We knew that there was a streaming event coming up last week. They were going to announce properties, talk about their big advertising push of why people should subscribe to Paramount Plus, all of this. But we were always like, okay, this could be something where you might see the show appear. Boy, were we shocked. The night of this streaming event, not only does CBS and Viacom and Nickelodeon, however you want to call them, announce more Avatar But they announced that they are bringing back Mike and Brian, the original creators, coming back to Nickelodeon. They are establishing Avatar Studios, a creative development studio of a subsidiary of Nickelodeon dedicated to creating Avatar content, animated shows, movies, uh, side projects, spinoffs, the whole works, investing money and time and energy into a franchise that has been reinvigorated. I gotta say... I was at the gym when this news broke. I had the best workout of my life. The energy and enthusiasm flowing through me that night was unbelievable. Thinking of the possibilities of what we could see in the future, knowing from the first press release that the first project that Avatar Studios is going to work on is a feature length theatrical animated film. Now we don't know what this film is going to involve. We don't know who it's going to star. We don't know if it's the original gang. We don't know if it's a Korra film. We don't know if it's a film about a new avatar, if they're adapting some sort of comic or novel into a movie. We have no idea. But just the fact that not only are we getting a third show for Avatar, but we are getting 
a cinematic universe, pretty much, of animated content is mind-blowing. To think that this franchise that so many of us have said for years deserves more support is now going to be blown up in this way is absolutely phenomenal. The ideas are endless. If you want to do a show or a movie about the original gang when they're older dealing with some threat, there's so much time there between Avatar and Korra that we don't know about. If you want to go back in time and tell a story that is worth telling, maybe a, um, a limited series talking about Iroh's siege of Ba Sing Se, his famous 600 day siege, with, with, which ended with the death of Lu Ten and Iroh coming home unsuccessful and that radically changing his life. That would be amazing. If you, if we want to see the story of the second Avatar, the Avatar that comes after Wan, the first Avatar to be reincarnated in the cycle, and how they deal with the fallout of being this figure, another amazing idea. My preference to get a third series, a la an Avatar or a Korra, talking about an Earth Avatar from the from the past. We know that they're going in order. We did air. We did water. Earth is next. Fire was before Aang. But I don't want to go past Korra's timeline just yet. Seeing someone from the past would be amazing. There's so many different ideas. Adapting the Kyoshi novels. We have two of them right now. The Rise of Kyoshi and The Shadow of Kyoshi. They are canon. They tell the story of Kyoshi as a young adult, maturing into being the Avatar, learning about her backstory, learning about her first dealings as a world leader. The books are fantastic. They're novels. They're not comics. So if you guys enjoy reading, I would highly recommend these. But the possibilities are ultimately endless. We now not only have to worry about being hamstrung by, oh, we get one show or, oh, we get one movie. This is a massive undertaking. There is going to be a time in the future where there are multiple projects underway at the same time, where we're getting full series, where we're getting movies, where we're getting straight to Paramount Plus films, or as they talked about with this one, full theatrical releases. The possibilities are endless. And given the fact that we've only had two shows, We've had Avatar and we've had Korra. Those are the only two major properties from this franchise in terms of the TV content. There's no real concern about it getting bloated. You can drastically expand this franchise and stick with the source material in a way that is endearing and just grows the world and grows the lore of this universe. It's something that Avatar has a unique opportunity to do because it's been so hamstrung over the last 16 years since the original show aired in that it hasn't had the support that it deserves. Now, there's been a lot of talk of, oh, Korra was not handled well on Nickelodeon. What's going to be different this time? Well, it's important to note that Nickelodeon has new people at the top. There is a new management team in place, which most likely made Mike and Brian comfortable coming back. And it probably helps that they are basically looking at them and saying, take our money, take this thing that we've seen to be wildly successful last year and really put your creative talents into it. I think that's awesome. I think this is a win for Avatar fans across the board. I genuinely don't think there's a lot to be concerned with at the moment, considering we don't know a lot. I think this is massively positive, but I want to know what you guys think. I've done one previous Avatar video on the channel. It was talking about the news of Mike and Brian leaving the Netflix show. This is the complete opposite. This is a joyous day. When I got this news last week, it was the most exciting day to be a fan of Avatar I think I've ever had. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for Avatar Studios? What shows and movies do you want them to make first? And what spin-off shows or limited releases would you like to see? When I talk about Iroh's 600-day siege of Ba Sing Se, I'm thinking of something similar to what we're getting with the, uh, with the Obi-Wan Kenobi limited series on Disney+. Plus. Something with that feel. I think that would be awesome. With that being said, I will talk to you guys soon with more Pokemon content, more Minecraft content, more Avatar content, hopefully. And I hope you guys subscribe if you want to see more of it. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.